Hello and welcome to Pittsburgh City Council's regular meeting for Tuesday, June 25th, 2019. My name is Kim Clark Baskin and I'm your Deputy City Clerk. With us today, we have our sign language interpreter, Logan Showalter. The following is a list of legislation to be introduced by Pittsburgh City Council. Councilman Burgess presents Bill number 1800. Resolution authorizing the city solicitor on behalf of the city of Pittsburgh to petition the Orphans Court Division of the Court of Common Pleas of Allegheny County to request the transfer of a portion of a certain lot now part of Enright Parklet in the East Liberty neighborhood in the city of Pittsburgh to Penley Park South Inc. in exchange for an abutting parcel of land approximately equal size and value as the subject property to be transferred from PPS to the city of Pittsburgh for consolidation with and use as part of Enright Parklet plus all necessary or appropriate expenses incurred by the city and or upon such other terms and conditions as the court or the city authorize and or direct. Bill number 1801, resolution providing for the issuance of a warrant and a total sum of $3,900 in favor of Medico Legal Inc. for expert witness services related to the action filed in the Common Pleas Court of Allegheny County. Bill number 1802, resolution amending resolution 234 of 219 which authorized the issuance of a warrant in favor of Timothy Arnold by changing the issuance of the warrant as follows. In favor of Timothy M. Arnold and his counsel, Villanova Law Offices, in an amount not to exceed $5,400 in full and final settlement of a police-related matter. Councilwoman Deb Gross presents Bill Number 1803 ordinance accepting a new street name, Beehive Street, in a 15th Ward of the City of Pittsburgh as per recommendation by the City of Pittsburgh Addressing Committee. Bill number 1804, ordinance accepting a new street name, Eliza Street, in a 15th Ward of the City of Pittsburgh as per recommendation of the City of Pittsburgh Addressing Committee. Bill number 1805, ordinance accepting a new street name, Guadalupe Place, in the 25th Ward of the City of Pittsburgh, as per recommendation by the City of Pittsburgh Addressing Committee. Bill number 1806, ordinance accepting a new street name, Hopper Place, in the 6th Ward of the City of Pittsburgh, as per recommendation by the City of Pittsburgh Addressing Committee. Councilman Corey O'Connor presents Bill Number 1807, Resolution Adopting Plan Revision to the City of Pittsburgh's Official Sewage Facilities Plan for Bobby, Bobby Wallow, 200 Ingrid Place, Carnegie, PA. Bill Number 1808, Resolution Authorizing the City of Pittsburgh to enter into an agreement to execute the Alcasan Service Agreement Amendment by and among the Allegheny County Sanitary Authority, the Pittsburgh Water and Sewer Authority, the Western Westmoreland Municipal Authority, the North Huntington Township Municipal Authority, the Township of North Huntington, the Penn Township Sewage Authority, in the Township of Penn regarding the Cavittsville Adara area. This piece of legislation is sponsored by Councilman Corey O'Connor. Councilwoman Erica Strasberger presents Bill Number 1809, Ordinance Amending and Supplementing the Pittsburgh Code, Title VI, Conduct, Article V, Discrimination, Chapter 659, Unlawful Practices, Sections 659.02, Unlawful Employment Practices, 
659.03, unlawful housing practices, and 659.04, unlawful public accommodation practices to explicitly prohibit employment, housing, and public accommodation discrimination based on gender identity and gender expression, create more inclusive definitions of protected classes, and add gender inclusive language. This piece of legislation is sponsored by Councilwoman Erica Strasberger and Council President Bruce Krause. Council President Krause presents Bill Number 1810, Resolution appointing David C. Bush to serve as a member of the Commission on Human Relations for a term to expire October 31st, 2022. Bill Number 1811, Resolution appointing J. Matthew Landis to serve as a member of the Commission on Human Relations for a term to expire March 31st, 2023. Bill number 1812, resolution informing City Council of the reappointment of Dr. Emma Lucas Darby as a member of the Citizens Police Review Board with a term to expire October 31st, 2023. Bill number 1813, Resolution informing City Council of the reappointment of Sheldon Williams as a member of the Citizens Police Review Board with a term to expire October 31st, 2023. And Bill number 1814, resolution appointing David O. Newfer to serve as a member of the Civil Service Commission for a term to expire December 31st, 2021. That concludes the reading of the legislation. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the regular meeting of Pittsburgh City Council for today, Tuesday, June the 25th, 2019. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Reverend Burgess. Here. Mr. Coghill. Here. Ms. Gross. Here. Mrs. Harris. Mr. Lavelle. Here. Mr. O'Connor. Mrs. Cal Smith. Ms. Strasberger. Here. Mr. Krause, President. Here. S seven members present. Thank you, Madam Here. Clerk. <laughs> Councilwoman Cal Smith, good morning. Welcome. Would you all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, and we ask that you would then remain standing for a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Thank President, you all. You may be seated. Mr. President, I, I should have yes. asked before. Uh, can we have a moment of silence for um, Ann Kelly? She's the mother of Guy Kelly, the officer that was killed on you know, April 4th, and she just passed away this weekend. Uh, so, uh, I, didn't, I was not aware of that. Thank you, Councilwoman. Yes. Um, moment of silence. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Councilwoman. Thank you, Councilwoman. Can I just say one thing about her? A few things about her, because I think, I'm sorry if everyone just indulged with me for a moment. She was an amazing woman. She, I met her when she was um, involved in the PTA at Westwood School. Her, she's from Ferrywood. She raised Guy Kelly in Ferrywood. And I tell people all the time, I've known her since our kid, my son, who's now, my youngest son, who's now 29, uh, was in kindergarten and went to school with her daughter. And she was always a fighter for the kids and so gracious and did so many things for the Ferrywood community. But after her son, um, Officer Kelly, was killed on, uh, on April 4th, it changed her, her, very, her very being. And you just could always see, that, and she was here before, and you could see the pain in her eyes and, and know the pain in her heart constantly. And so I, I'm, I think her family has peace in knowing that she's now with her son. But um, my condolences to the family here. Um, and I know that everyone's... Um, really thinking of her and feeling of her great loss for the Ferrywood community and for our community in general because she was known throughout. So, Thanks, Councilwoman. Thank you. thank you. We have no proclamations to be presented this morning, but we do have a will of council to be presented by Councilwoman Gross. How do you like to proceed, Councilwoman? Want to come yeah. up and read? Uh, I, I'm happy with the clerk for the clerk to read it. Good. Thank you. 
Madam Clerk, do you have a copy? Councilwoman Gross presents, whereas child marriage is often forced marriage, since children cannot be expected to retain legal counsel, locate safe housing, and file for divorce. And whereas nearly a quarter million children were wed between the years 2000 and 2010, and whereas girls who marry before the age of 19 are 50% more likely to drop out of high school and four times less likely to complete college than their unwed peers. And whereas women who married in their teenage years tend to have more children, more closely spaces, resulting in an inability to access educational opportunities. And whereas until very recently, child marriage was legal under federal law in all 50 states until Delaware and New Jersey led the nation to end this abuse of the human rights of children. And whereas the poverty, stress, and lack of education creates a 23% greater risk of serious health problems like heart attacks, diabetes, cancer, and strokes in those who were married as children. And whereas, girls have a fundamental right to self-determination, safety, and education. And whereas, the Pennsylvania State Senate's SB 81 and the State House's HB 360 will end child marriage in Pennsylvania, becoming the third state to do so, granting the freedoms from abuse to all children. And now therefore be it resolved that the Council of the City of, Hereby, City of Pittsburgh hereby urges the Pennsylvania legislator to urgently pass State Bill 81 and House Bill 360 to grant the right of self-determination to children. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Councilwoman Gross. Yeah, I just want to um, thank um, the advocates for bringing this forward to support these House state, uh, the state House and State Senate bills. Um, clearly, it's 2019, um, and this is a, a public policy issue that is long overdue to address. Um, and so I, I, I hope that my colleagues will be supportive um, and that Harrisburg will listen to us. Thank you. Thank you. So in, in the form of a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Second. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed abstentions? Motion passes. Thank you, Councilwoman, very much. That concludes uh, the proclamation portion of the council meeting and takes us into public comment. Anyone wishing to speak before city council, of course, will have three minutes in which to do so. I would like to take this opportunity to remind everyone here to speak that our rules of council are clear when they state that comment is limited to matters of concern, official action, or deliberation, which are at this time or could at another time come before this council. We will not permit profanity and we will maintain order at all times. We ask that you please begin by giving your name and the neighborhood in which you reside for our public record. The green light will indicate the start of your three minutes. When the yellow light comes on, you'll have one minute to summarize your thoughts. When the red light comes on, then your time will have expired. May we have our first speaker, please. Hmm? Morning, Dr. Miller. Dr. Ronald N. Miller, Pittsburgh City, Oakland, Honolulu, Honolulu City, uh, Hawaii. I'm the Global Intelligence Society candidate for President 2020, globalintelligencesociety.org. Um, a few words about uh, China and India. This is June, uh, Global Intelligence Society sponsored Asian Intelligence Month. Uh, the uh, GDP rise for China is spectacular. 10% um, uh, over the last 30 years, average annual, uh, by comparison, the United States has not risen above 3% GDP annual. Uh, in India last year, 6% uh, annual. I just think this is a, a form of national, uh, very advanced, if not genius level intelligence on, the, on behalf of one that is really not a democratic polity, China, and the other, which is one of the most vibrant uh, democracies on the planet. Uh, concerns of uh, Pittsburgh City Council are uh, profanity and, and parenthood. Mr. Krauss, male. Pittsburgh district representatives uh, can get paternity leave. Yes? Mr. Krauss, is the word B-R-E-A-S-T a piece of profanity? 
according to the impermissible profane words list for public comment lawfully passed according to Pittsburgh City Rules of Council 3, Section 4C, Public Comment, and 1 Rules Section 3, by Council, so that a citizen possessing better information uh, can project a, a more accurate, more acute intelligence on a matter of concern. That person can avoid censorious interference by you and compulsory expulsion. But there is no such lawful, profane words list. Is there? Never been passed. No due process. Breasts. Both male and females have breasts, and some, very few, males lactate. If a lactating Pittsburgh adult male goes to Shenley Park, District 8, around 12 noon, takes out one of his breasts, and begins to breastfeed his baby, does an Oakland-based Pittsburgh police officer have the authority to arrest him for indecent exposure? What do you think, Ms. Strasburger? Ms. Strasburger, Council Representative District 8, do you support a lactating male's right to publicly breastfeed his baby? Do you support a lactating female's right to publicly breastfeed her baby in Pittsburgh? Do you do that? Would you do that in this, in this council room? Or risk being banned or banished by Mr. Krause? If one of the district representatives who are male has a baby, does he get the same paternity leave, $15,000 for three months, that you got? Okay, thanks, Dr. Miller. May we have our next speaker, please? Is there anyone else here this morning wishing to address council? Then seeing no further speakers, we'll close public comment and go into presentation of papers, beginning with Councilman Burgess, our Chair of Finance and Law. Thank you, Councilman. Council President, uh, sorry, Councilman Reverend Burgess presents Bill Number 1800, Resolution Authorizing the City Solicitor. On behalf of the City to petition the Orphans Court Division of the Court of Common Pleas of Allegheny County to request a transfer of a portion of a certain lot, now part of Enright Parklet, in the East Liberty neighborhood of the city in exchange for an abutting parcel of land approximately equal size and value as a subject property to be transferred from PPS to the city with and use as part of Enright Parklet plus all necessary or appropriate expenses incurred by the city and or upon such other terms and conditions as the court or the city authorize and or direct. Bill number 1801, resolution providing for the issue of a warrant in the total sum of $3,900 in favor of Medico Legal Incorporated for expert witness services related to the action filed in the Common Pleas Court of Allegheny County. Bill number 1802, resolution amending resolution number 234, which authorizes the issue of a warrant in favor of Timothy Arnold by changing the issue of the warrant as follows, in favor of Timothy M. Arnold and his counsel, Villanova Law Offices, in an amount not to exceed $5,400 in full and final settlement of a police-related matter. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Councilman Burgess. I'd like to make a motion that we waive Rule 8 on Bill 1803. Thank you. May I have a second on the motion? Pardon me? 1802, what did I say? 1802. 1802. I'm sorry. I, I said 03, but I meant 02. We have a second on the second. motion. Do we have discussion on the motion to waive the rules on Bill 1802? Then seeing none, all in favor, aye. 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 Opposed abstentions. 1802 then will appear on tomorrow's standing committee agenda. Councilman Cogho, our chair of urban recreation. No new papers, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilman. Councilwoman Gross, our chair of land use and economic development. Mr. President. Thank you, Councilwoman. Councilwoman Gross presents Bill Number 1803, ordinance accepting a new street name, Beehive Street in the 15th Ward of the city as per recommendation by the City of Pittsburgh Addressing Committee. Bill number 1804, ordinance accepting a new name street, Eliza Street in the 15th Ward of the city as per recommendation by the City of Pittsburgh Addressing Committee. Bill number 1805, ordinance accepting a new street name, Guadalupe Place in the 25th Ward of the city 
as per recommendation by the City of Pittsburgh Addressing Committee, Bill Number 1806, ordinance accepting a new street name, Hopper Place, in the sixth ward of the city, as per recommendation by the City of Pittsburgh Addressing Committee. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Councilwoman Harris, our Chair of Human Resources. Thank you, Mr. Krause. Thank you, Councilwoman Harris. Councilwoman Harris presents Bill Number 1816, Resolution Amending Resolution Number 280, providing for the filing of a grant with the 2017 CDBG program, so as to perform reprogramming within City Council from Northside Senior Programming, Southwest Pittsburgh CDC, to Allegheny West, and Zealous Hope Project, $3,000. Bill Number 1817, Resolution Amending Resolution Number 281, so as to perform reprogramming within City Council from Northside Senior Programming, Southwest Pittsburgh CDC, to Allegheny West and Zealous Hope Project, $3,500 to Allegheny West and $3,000 to Zealous Hope Project, Bill Number 1818, Resolution Amending Resolution Number 278, so as to reprogram funds within City Council's office from Parks and Recreation, Northside Senior Programming, to Kitchen of Grace, $2,000, Allegheny West, $7,530, and Cameron Welch Youth Baseball, $2,970, $70. Bill number 1819, resolution amending resolution number 279, so as to reprogram funds within City Council from Parks and Recreation, Northside Senior Programming, to Kitchen of Grace, $2,000, Allegheny West, $7,530, and Cameron Welch Youth Baseball, $2,970. Bill number 1820, resolution amending resolution 386, providing for an agreement with community orgs to perform reprogramming within city council from Poise Found, Holy Wisdom Parish Food Bank, Preservation Pittsburgh, and District 1 OMB. Citizens' Participation to Cameron Wealth Youth Baseball, District 1, DPW Projects, Troy Hill Community Center, Brothers and Sisters Emerging, Urban Academy of Greater Pittsburgh School, Naomi's Place, Earthen Vessels Outreach, Reading is Fundamental, Neighborhood Allies, and Community Theater. Bill number 1821, Resolution Amending Resolution 369, providing for an agreement with community orgs to perform reprogramming within City Council from Poise Foundation, Holy Wisdom Parish Food Bank, Preservation Pittsburgh, Allegheny City Historic Gallery, and District 1 to Cameron Welk Youth Baseball, District 1 Department of Public Works Projects, Troy Hill Community Center, Brothers and Sisters Emerging, Urban Academy of Greater Pittsburgh School, Naomi's Place, Earth and Vessels Outreach, Reading is Fundamental, and Community Theater doing business as Kelly Strayhorn Theater, $10,000. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Councilman Lavelle, our Chair of Public Excuse Safety me. Services. Mention to Rule 8, so it's on the agenda for tomorrow. Uh, Councilwoman, you brought this over first thing this morning, right? If I'm not mistaken. I'm sorry? You brought the legislation over to the clerk's office first thing this morning? No, I didn't. I guess it was the... Uh, our, our uh, budget department has had it. Okay. I just want to. We'll be, be able to discuss it tomorrow. Wanna... The problem was it was supposed to be put on last week. Budget department did not give it to the clerk's office. Just... So um, they were to have it at the clerk's office this week and. Uh, I wanted it to go with the rest of the uh, uh, movements that I've made. Uh, Just want to make sure the public has ample time to to view legislation and digest legislation. Right. So, um, so the councilwoman wishes to waive the rules on these bills that came over this morning, so that they may appear on tomorrow's standing committee agenda. Was that in the form of a motion, councilwoman? We have a second on the motion to waive the rules. Second. We have a second. Do we have discussion? On all of them. Do we have a discussion? All the bills under your committee. Do we have they're all CDBG. And yes. They're all yeah. uh, around five thousand dollar average. I'm aware, Councilwoman. Okay. For, no discussion. We're just having a discussion. Okay. All in favor? 
Aye. 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 Opposed abstentions. Thank uh, you. Bills, let's see here. Uh, bills 18, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21 will appear on tomorrow's standing committee agenda. Uh, next, uh, we have our Chair of Public Safety Services, Councilman Lavelle. No new papers, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman O'Connor, our Chair of Intergovernmental Affairs. Um, we have Councilman uh, Lavelle for Councilman O'Connor. Mr. President. Do we have, I don't have Councilman O'Connor on here. Councilman O'Connor presents Bill number 1807. Resolution adopting plan revision to the city oh. of Pittsburgh's official sewer facilities plan for Bobby Wallow. Bill number 1808. Resolution authorizing the city to enter into an agreement to execute the Alcasan service agreement amendment by and among the Allegheny County Sanitary Authority, the Pittsburgh Water and Sewer Authority, the Western Westmoreland Municipal Authority, the North Huntington Township Municipal Authority, the Township of North Huntington, the Penn Township Sewer Authority, and the Township of Penn regarding the Cabotsville, Ardara area. Thank you, Madam Clerk. At Councilwoman Kel Smith, our Chair of Public Work Services. Good morning, Mr. President. No new papers. Thank you, Councilwoman. Councilwoman Strasburger, our Chair of Innovation, Performance, and Asset Management. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilwoman. <coughs> Councilwoman Strasburger presents Bill number 1809, ordinance amending and supplementing the Pittsburgh City Code, Title VI, Conduct, Article V, Discrimination, Chapter 659, <coughs> Unlawful Practices, Unlawful Employment Practices, Unlawful Housing Practices, Unlawful Public Accommodations Practices to explicitly prohibit employment, housing, and public accommodation, discrimination based on gender identity and gender expression, create more inclusive definitions of protected classes and add gender inclusive language. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, the chair, I do have one sponsored <coughs> bill. Madam Clerk, if I may. Council President Krauss presents bill number 1815, resolution authorizing the mayor, city clerk, and or the director of the Department of Innovation and Performance to enter into a contract with PrimeGov Solutions for a legislative management system the total cost over five years shall not exceed $255,912. Thank you, Madam Clerk. And I have five appointments. Bill number 1810, resolution appointing David C. Bush to serve as a member of the Commission on Human Relations for a term to expire October 31st, 2022. Bill number 1811, resolution appointing J. Matthew Lannis to serve as a member of the Commission on Human Relations for a term to expire March 31st, 2023. Bill number 1812, resolution informing City Council of the reappointment of Dr. Emma Lukerts Darby as a member of the Citizen Police Review Board with a term to expire October 31st, 2023. Bill number 1813, resolution informing City Council of the reappointment of Sheldon Williams as a member of the Citizen Police Review Board with a term to expire October 31st, 2023. Bill number 1814, resolution appointing David F. Onifer to serve as a member of the Civil Service Commission for a term to expire December 31st, 2021. Thank you, Madam Clerk. On bills 1810 and 11, which are new appointments to the Commission on Human Relations, what is the pleasure? Question. Councilman? Eighteen twelve and eighteen thirteen. This is why I'm taking bills separately. Yes, I'm just I just want to make sure I'm clear. Those those do not need our approval, right? Does the other bills, uh, eighteen ten, eighteen eleven, do they do they do they need our approval? Okay, that's my that's yeah. question. Okay. All right, so on bills eighteen ten and eleven, I I will counsel or Madam Clark. Um, uh, Councilman Harris. I motion on 1810, 11, and 14. 
uh, to be interviewed. I didn't ask about 14. I'm asking about 8 and 10, 10 and 11. Your desire is to bring those in for interview, Councilwoman? My desire is for all three. The, the Thank third you. one get is to that not. Momentarily. Right now, I'm asking what is the pleasure on 18, 10, and 11, and that is to bring them in for interview? And that is in the form of a motion? Anything you want. Is that in the form of a motion? That was a form of a motion. May I have a second on that motion? Second. Second. Do we have discussion on the motion for Bill 18, 10, and 11 to bring those in for interview? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed Aye. abstentions? We will schedule interviews for 18, 10, and 11. On bills 1812 and 1813, these are reappointments to the Citizens Police Review Board that do not require council confirmation. What's the pleasure of the body? Councilman uh, Burgess. Motion to approve. Okay, we have a motion to approve. May I have a second, please? Second. I have a motion to approve and a second on 1812 and 13. Uh, further discussion? Is that Councilwoman Harris? I can't tell. Nope. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed abstentions. We have approved 1812 and 1813. On 1814, which is a new appointment to the Civil Service Commission, what is the pleasure of the body? Councilwoman Harris. Motion to interview. We have a motion to interview on 1814. Do I have a second? Second. Motion to interview in a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed abstentions. We'll schedule 1814 for interview as well. Uh, also, then that moves us on to unfinished business. Before us, we have a number of appointments to the Clean Pittsburgh Commission and the Equal Opportunity Review Commission. Interviews were held last Wednesday. Bill 1645. Resolution appointing Erica Nenos as the commission of the Clean Pittsburgh Commission of the City for a term to expire April 30th, 2023. Bill number 1717. Resolution appointing Jenna Kramer as a member of the Pittsburgh Equal Opportunity Review Commission with a term to expire April 30th, 2022. Thank you again. Motion or er, interviews were held last Wednesday. May I have a motion to approve? So move. May I have second? second. Motion to approve in a second. Do we have discussion? Seeing no discussion, all in favor, aye. 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 Opposed abstentions? Those bills are passed. Our next order of business then is reports of committee for final action. Our uh, first committee of the morning is our committee on finance and law. Our chair is Councilman Burgess. Perfect. Councilman. Councilman Reverend Burgess presents bill number 1796. Report of the Committee on Finance and Law for June 19, 2019, with an affirmative recommendation. Bill number 1768, resolution approving, authorizing the mayor and director of innovation and performance on behalf of the city, are hereby authorized to enter into an amendment to extend the existing intergovernmental cooperation agreement between the city and the county of Allegheny for the enterprise resource planning by increasing the total amount by $630,000 for continuing support of the J.D. Edwards ERP system. Bill number 1769, resolution authorizing pursuant to chapter 210 of the city code, the mayor and director of public safety to accept a donation from the Pirates Charity of $11,000 to be deposited into the public safety support trust fund. Bill number 1770, yes. resolution authorizing the mayor and director of OMB to execute relevant agreement to receive grant funding from the Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection's Alternative Fuel Incentive Grant Program to add eight dual hose electric vehicle charging stations to the Second Avenue fleet lot, not to exceed $135,160. Bill number 1771, resolution authorizing the mayor and director of the Office of Management and Budget to execute relevant agreement to receive grant funding from the Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection's Alternative Fuels Incentive Grant Program to purchase nine electric vehicles to be added to the city's fleet, not to exceed $67,500. Thank you, Madam Clerk. You've heard the reading and the title of the bills under our Committee on Finance and Law. Further discussion begins with Councilwoman Gross. Thank you, Mr. President. I just wanted to say a couple of words about Bill 1768 because I think a lot of members had questions last week and then uh, the administration was able to forward us 
some information. Um, so I just wanted to read a little bit of it out loud. Uh, a couple of council members asked what is the total amount that we have spent on J.D. Edwards. And um, so the annual sum has ranged from about $2 million a year in 2012 and 2013 uh, when the system was first being implemented, which included a lot of the kind of support for transferring um, systems. And then from 2014 through 2018, um, it has ranged in around uh, about a million dollars total. Um, the license is just over $500,000 a year, and that remains consistent. But then the amount of services that we paid for direct has varied. Um, and as I, I just wanted to kind of say, not uh, that I'm opposed to this specific piece of legislation, we certainly need to um, continue the duplicate services, make sure that we're continuing support so that we have a payroll system. Um, but just to keep repeating, uh, because it's, I think, a continuing issue that we should all be aware of that I think most municipalities are facing, is that when you've traded off people support for um, technology systems, I mean, technology systems have replaced our, our kind of paper and, and people systems, um, there's a significant cost and that we are de become dependent on these um, outsourced technology solutions. And it really is adding up department by department. Again, Pittsburgh is not unique in this problem. Most of us in our daily lives also really rely on technology. Um, and we know, you know, you start off with a cable bill that's $30 a month and you end up with one that's $150 a month, right? <laughs> I haven't had cable in years for that reason. <laughs> I'm too frugal to want to pay that much. But um, similarly, this is in the millions, right? And so over that span, not even a 10-year span, um, it's been uh, somewhat over $9 million. Um, and yet, how else are we going to cut paychecks to 3,000 people? So. Um, I just wanted to kind of share those thoughts, um, and I think this will be a continuing conversation. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thanks, Councilwoman. Councilwoman Harris. Yes, and I'd just like to continue on Councilwoman Gross's piece there. When Act 47 actually shoved uh, J.D. Edwards down our throat, when the school district uh, probably wouldn't have charged as much and uh, actually, they're still way ahead of us in technology. And to spend uh, just on licenses, $3.6 million, and services, $5.7 million. And uh, the annual sum up to 2018 was 9.3 three million dollars I think is absolutely ridiculous on how old that system is we still haven't got an answer on exactly how old that system is but I think it's back in the gay 90s or something uh, and we just keep paying and paying and paying and uh, that's good taxpayer monies that could be used on our neighborhoods or uh, I would say at least from 2012 to 2018, $9.3 million could have been used on a whole new company, a whole new plan for technology. and. Uh, I know I've talked to the school board about it, and they had no problems uh, working with us, but uh, I remember when this was shoved down our throat and to find out how old it is, and we just keep paying and paying for it is ridiculous, so I'll be abstaining on this today. Thanks, Councilwoman. Uh, Councilman uh, Coghill. Yes, uh, I think Councilwoman Gross said the key word here is dependent. For me, it's very bothersome for our departments to be dependent on any type of software or any type of system. 
even if they had to revert back to writing checks themselves, you know, we always got to have a backup plan. You know, you can't be dependent on something like that. It's just, and I'm glad they're making the strides, I think, to get away from that. I hope so. But it's really just the tip of the iceberg, the money that, you know, we, we spend in, in this particular situation. But, um, yeah, I hope in the future we um, can use, lose that word dependent because we're the customer. We should never be dependent on anything. Thanks, Councilman. Councilwoman uh, Kel Smith. I just want to um, echo the concerns here today. I think that um, I think before we've mentioned something that we would never vote for this again, and yet here we are again voting for it again. And so, um, you know, I, I think that the people have had enough time to, like my Councilwoman here said, buy a totally different program or work with our universities that are so talented and have so much so much talent within them. I think that there's got to be another way. To, and, and I. And I am con I'm concerned because we are, seem, do seem dependent, but we're also at the, dependent upon the information we're receiving from the people providing it, from the people that need this contract. So I, I really think having an independent um, opinion with some of this stuff would be more helpful sometimes. And I wish we had more time to do that and, um, and, and find out whether or not uh, there is a more simpler way or a better way to address this. This is a lot of money. And when I'm I'm looking mm -hmm. at places like Grandview Avenue that's coming over the hillside with sidewalks closing and infrastructure that's crumbling all over the place, and we're searching high and low and turning over every seat cushion to find money. Uh, this kind of money on this on this again, when we keep saying that we're going to change, we're, we're not going to, we're trying to you know get our way out of this. Uh, it just seems to me we're really not trying to get our way out of this because. I think we could have bought an entirely different program by now. You know, and, and I, I, I really should talk to my brother. I, I tell people this all the time. He was a dean of Carnegie Mellon for computer science and engineering uh, years ago, and he just retired a couple years back. But I said, I, I have some people that I could actually talk to. I need to do that. Thanks, Councilwoman. Thank Anyone else for first round of discussion? Then we'll take Councilwoman Harris for second round. Yeah, and I just wanted to add to that that uh, when they were selling this to us at the table, they said we would be able to count down to every pencil, everything on what we had. And till today, we still don't have this system taking us down to every pencil. So um, I don't know whose friends these are that we just keep paying and paying them, but. Uh, are sure getting a lot. Okay, thanks, Councilwoman. Uh, seeing no further discussion then, the bills under our Committee on Finance and Law are ready for final action, and all in favor of the passage of the bills will vote aye when their names are called. Those opposed will vote no. And Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Reverend Burgess. Aye. Mr. Coghill. Aye. Ms. Gross. Aye. Mrs. Harris. Aye on all bills except for, uh, I believe it's 768, I'll, I'll abstain. Mr. Laval? Aye. Mrs. Kel Smith? Aye. Ms. Strasberger? Aye. Mr. Cross, President? Aye. On Bill 1768, I 7, 1 abstention, all other bills, ayes 8, no 0. Thank you, Madam Clerk. The bills, having then received the legally required number of votes, have finally passed. Next, we have our Committee on Public Works Services. Our Chair is Councilwoman Teresa Kilsmith. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilwoman. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Thank you. Councilwoman Kilsmith presents Bill Number 1797, Report of the Committee on Public Works for June 19, 2019, with an affirmative recommendation. Bill number 1778, resolution granting unto Saddles property, their successors and assigns the privilege and license to construct, maintain and use at their own cost and expense, a handicap ramp with handrail at 1016 Fifth Avenue in the first ward, sixth council district. Thank you, Madam Clerk. You've heard the reading in the title of the bill under our public works uh, services committee. Do we have further discussion on the bill? Okay, seeing none, the bill's now ready for final action. All in favor of the passage of the bill will vote aye when their names are called. Those opposed will vote no. And Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Reverend Burgess. Aye. Mr. Coghill. Aye. Ms. Gross. Aye. Mrs. Harris. Aye. Mr. Lavelle. Aye. Mrs. Kel Smith. Aye. Ms. Strasberger. Aye. Mr. Krauss, President. Aye. Ayes 8, no 0. Thank you, Madam Clerk. The bill, having received the legally required number of votes, 
has finally passed. Next, we have our Committee on Land Use and Economic Development. Our Chair is Councilwoman Deborah Gross. Thank you, Councilwoman. Councilwoman Gross presents Bill Number 1798, Report of the Committee on Land Use and Economic Development for June 19, 2019, with an affirmative recommendation. Bill Number 1772. Resolution amending resolution number 98 of the residential park and permit program area KK in the South Side Flats Community Council District 3. Bill number 1773. Resolution amending resolution number 363 for the residential park and permit program area X in the Shady Side Community Council District 8. Bill number 1774. Resolution amending resolution number 13, providing for an agreement with consultants and vendors to assist the city in developing plans and studies to support the development of an Oakland neighborhood plan and provide for the payment of the cost thereof not to exceed $250,000 by specifying the consultant team selected for the project and updating the operating budget year and account number. Thank you, Madam Clerk. You have heard the reading and the title of the bills under our Committee on Land Use and Economic Development. Do we have further discussion on the bills? And seeing none, these bills are now ready for final action. And all in favor of the passage of the bills will vote aye when their names are called. Those opposed will vote no. And Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Reverend Burgess. Aye. Mr. Coghill. Aye. Ms. Gross. Aye. Mrs. Harris. Aye. Mr. Lavelle. Aye. Mrs. Kel Smith. Aye. Ms. Strasburger. Aye. Mr. Krause, President. Aye. Ayes 8, no 0. Thank you, Madam Clerk. The bills having received then the legally required number of votes have finally passed. Our final committee of the morning is our Committee on Intergovernmental Affairs. Our chair is Councilman Corey O'Connor. May I have Councilman Lavelle for Councilman O'Connor? Thank you, Councilman. Councilman O'Connor presents Bill Number 1799, Report of the Committee on Intergovernmental Affairs for June 19, 2019, with an affirmative recommendation. Bill Number 1776, Resolution Adopting Plan Revision to the City of Pittsburgh's Official Sewer Facilities Plan for 43rd Street Townhomes at 172 43rd Street. Bill Number 1777, Resolution adopting plan revision to the City of Pittsburgh's official sewer facilities plan for the M. Hearst Group, 1 Bigelow Square, Suite 630. Thank you, Madam Clerk. You've heard the reading and the title of these bills under our Committee on Intergovernmental Affairs. Do we have further discussion on either of the bills? Okay, seeing none, the bills are now ready for final action. All in favor of the passage of the bill will vote aye when their names are called. Those opposed will vote no. And Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Reverend Burgess. Mr. Coghill. Aye. Ms. Gross. Aye. Mrs. Harris. Aye. Mr. Lavelle. Mrs. Kel Smith. Aye. Ms. Strasburger. Aye. Mr. Krause, President. Aye. Ayes 8, no 0. Thank you, Madam Clerk. The bills having received the legally required number of votes have finally passed. That takes us into motions and resolutions. The chair has a few brief meeting announcements. This afternoon at 1.30, Council is hosting a Cablecast public hearing on Bill 1735 as it relates to a liquor license transfer application for Woods House LLC. Then after the hearing at 2.30, Council will hold executive session as it relates to matters of ethics. Also, please note that due to the 4th of July holiday next week, Council will host both of their legislative and standing committee meetings next Monday, July the 1st at 10 a.m. and 11.30 p.m. respectively. Uh, with that, I'll move to Councilwoman Harris, then Councilwoman Kel Smith. Yes, I do have quite a few interns in my office this year. And I'm lucky to have them all because they're all great workers. And I just wanted to let them stand up so that you know who they are. Sit down to get your name so everybody knows you by name. <laughs> okay. Uh, Bird Graham, uh, he's a constituent service liaison, attends LaSalle University in Philadelphia. And he graduated from Central Catholic. Okay, I thought I'd hear some things. Okay, and then we have Chelsea uh, Arlington. 
and she's work-based learning coordinator, attending the University of Pittsburgh, master's in social services, uh, which we deeply need around here. Uh, 2008, graduated from Claritin University, and in 2014, graduated from Obama. Okay, and then we have Brooke Larry. Uh, she's my summer intern, graduated from Shadyside Academy, attending Howard University in the fall in political science. And Javon, summer intern, graduated from Perry High School. Uh, and he's on his way to college, too. Just don't know which one <coughs> yet, correct? Okay, and then we have Brandon Taylor, summer intern, graduate of Pennsylvania Leadership Charter School, attends culinary arts school in the fall to be a chef. Can't wait to taste the food that he'll make. So uh, I think I have a great group this year. We're going to get a lot of things done before the end of the year. So uh, I just wanted everyone out here and the public to meet our interns that are here for mostly to the end of the year. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Councilwoman. Councilwoman Kel Smith. Thank you. I, I also have an intern in my office, um, Chris Talbot uh, Whittle, but he's not here. I mean, he's doing something in the back. So I just want to introduce him too, but, uh, and thank uh, the Department of Personnel for the opportunity to have so many talented uh, young people in our offices. Um, and I just really want to make a couple comments about the, people have been hearing on the news about Grandview Avenue and the crumbling sidewalks and uh, some of the decay that's happening up on, on that area. I just, I want to thank um, Dan Gilman and Mayor Perduta's office for his uh, quick response. I think that, you know, for decades, you know, there's been um, a lack of investment in that infrastructure, but there were some basic services that we should have been providing in the city and, and hadn't been um, in terms of like the weeds and painting fences and basic maintenance. And although um, I want to thank Dan Gilman and Mayor Peduto for um, searching for funding and working on the funding for um, some of the repairs that's it's going to be over uh, around a million dollars um, and this is just for the current infrastructure there is so many other needs on, the, on that hillside that it's in the millions um, if we do uh, everything that needs to be done and we have had um, a walk through and I, I, I can't remember who all was there if there was any other council members you, you may have been there or somebody from your office but we had walkthroughs with Congressman Doyle, Senator Fontaine, State Representative DZ um, mm -hmm. Harry Reach, Representative Harry Reach, all trying to find funding for Grandview Avenue. I didn't take him to look at the view. I took him to look at Grandview and see the, the work that needs done up there. And we've had meetings in the mayor's office um, with the MWCDC as well and other folks and, and all those folks I just mentioned, trying to figure out a way to find funding for the area. About a year ago, Congressman Doyle did say that he would help us identify funding for Grandview, um, but we he needed a study so he could use that to leverage um, you know additional dollars, but the study was a million dollars. So we decided instead of doing the study, we would do the work because the community wanted us to do the immediate work. But what I want to say is that um, while I'm watching across this across my my district, I, I definitely feel the closure of the fourth division in our area that we're seeing so much of this. Um, weeds and debris that we have never seen before. And I mean, it shouldn't take an act of the, of the chief of staff, of the mayor, who is so busy with so many things, to worry about getting weeds cut. And, but it did, and, and I just want to thank him for that. But I do think that we need to look into and question why, and he is beginning, and he, uh, Chief of Staff Gilman is questioning why it wasn't done, why, why weeds weren't cut, why railings weren't painted, why things, why trees aren't, you know, we know the trees are, are more of a questionable thing that has to happen because the last time they cut trees, the hillside came down. And um, while we want to keep the view, we want to keep the, the road up too. Um, so there's a lot going on on Grandview, and I just want to assure people that the 
uh, mayor's office is working on. I want to thank uh, Mayor Peduto and Dan Gilman uh, for their work on this, and, and Director Gable and Director Ricks, because yeah. they are putting a lot of time in. And we have one of the best divisions in, in the fifth division, some of the best employees. So that when when I see things like weeds aren't cut and paint, it makes me wonder and question what's going on that they weren't done, because our division is amazing, and you know that uh, we have a lot of amazing workers there. Um, so it, it leaves a lot of questions, but I do want to say this is a regional asset, and we really do need our state and federal elected officials to help identify funding without us having to spend a million dollars to get it. Um, we need some we need some help in, in that area, and I do want to thank the, those who have met with us and those who have said that they would work with us. But I think until people realize this is a regional asset that uh, but I also want to point out, we're talking about raising taxes with Pittsburgh, you know, for Pittsburgh Parks Conservancy to do some work. Part of their agreement in uh, Mount Washington, uh, as I can recall, and I want to say, I, I have to, I asked for a copy of the agreement, was that they were going to take uh, write grants for Grandview Scenic Byway, which includes that half of Grandview and McArdle Roadway. And I believe they had written one grant and didn't receive it or, or didn't run a grant. I can't remember what happened. But... If we're talking about giving them more money, let's hold them accountable for the money that they and the projects are supposed to be doing now. And uh, and so I just want to say it's not just one group of people, one group or one department. There's a lot of people that have failed that area, and it's been decades of disinvestment. The more serious issues are the structure underground. It's not a simple sidewalk fix. It's five hundred thousand dollars because it's basically the sidewalk is sitting on top of hollow. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's no, there's nothing underneath it. I mean, one little, I think one pedestal or something. Mm -hmm. And so the sidewalks are hollow. It's not like they can just go put in a sidewalk. So I want to tell people, if you're planning on going to Mount Washington for the 4th of July, you can still go up there. You still can see the views. But um, please make sure you, stay, you respect the barriers that are up there and because we don't want somebody falling through one of those barriers and straight through the sidewalk because there is no, it's a drop. It's a significant drop. Thanks, Councilor Woman. Thank you. I understand the repairs are to be completed by end of August. By, I uh, no, they begin in August they, begin it, because in August. there's so many repairs. Um, they begin in August, and the um, well, some of the projects have started. They've started weeding and doing some of this stuff. And the structural repairs. Yeah, begin and I do want to say some of this was already in the budget. So when people say, "Oh, we called the media," no, that usually makes us not want to do it. But what I would tell you is that the. Um, some of these projects were already in the budget. Some of them were already planned. Some of the things that weren't planned were the were the weeds and debris that should have been cut. Nobody, you know, understood why that wasn't being done, and the sidewalk collapsing was not planned. Nobody planned for the sidewalk to, to fall in. So yes, we are responding now because if a sidewalk fell in, you have to. Um, and when we saw the when chief of staff Gilman saw the weeds and debris and uh, things that the ma basic maintenance that needed done up there, he started asking questions and, and rightfully so. And I'm glad that he did. But I do want to say that I don't blame the crews because our crews are such hard workers. I, I wonder where the decisions were uh, to divert those resources away from Grandview Avenue. Um, but I will say that I'm, I'm thankful that uh, chief of staff Gilman's helping us. Thank you. Councilwoman Harris. Yeah, I want to say the same thing about the weeds that we send into the first division every year. And uh, it's the same weeds, same streets, because we've collected them over the years. And uh, uh, we send them in before they even get up. So uh, now we had sent them into Director uh, Gable's office. So we're hoping to get the weeds done, but I don't see how they can possibly, you know, go past weeds that are four foot out in the middle of the street, uh, around bends where people can't even see going around. Uh, when we give them a list where they can go boom, 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 and get those weeds done. Uh, it shouldn't take a call to 311 it should be done. And, you know, they get the same list every year. So this time we got to give it to the director. Uh, also, I'm just saying this uh, for, uh, to try to find out, I'm curious, because so many people are starting to get electric cars. And if we're installing a dual hose electric uh, vehicle charger stations, Will they be open to the public? It's 
not a question for me, Councilman. It's a question for the department, but I would offer no for city vehicles, but you'll find your answer in the department. Okay, so um, you would have thought they would have put the answer in here, but uh, the public pay for all this, so you would think that if the public was in that area and they weren't using one of these chargers, that it would be open to the public. Thank you, Councilwoman. Councilman uh, Coghill. Uh, first, I want to thank Councilwoman Kel Smith for her leadership up in Mount Washington. For me, that's very important. I mean, you know, people's view of Pittsburgh, you know, one place they flock to is Grandview Avenue. It's iconic up there, and, you know, that sets an impression of the city up there. So I think it's important for that to be, you know, well taken care of and well maintained from here on out. The other thing, since we're on the uh, issue of introducing our interns, I can't quite compete with uh, Councilwoman Harris's basketball team over here, but, but I did bring my own uh, intern in, and this, this is Miss Shantae Solomon. Shantae, stand up for us, would you please, and say hello. Shantae is uh, attending the Heinz School of CMU, and she's right out of Brooklyn, New York. So uh, she's here, it's her first, first year in Pittsburgh, and she's gonna work on some flooding issues. That's great. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome to all. Um, can, I, can I just one more thing? I'm sorry. I just want to say that when we're talking about all the weeds and debris, I think a lot of what we're missing is, and I say this all the time, is the red up crew, because this right. is where they would come in and they would have cut down whatever needed done. They would have gone on private property and cut oh. private property and then issued a citation. I so I just want to say that. that is something that we need. I'm sorry, Councilman Harris, I'm starting up again. But I just want to say I think that that is something that the Women's Caucus has been discussing, that something other council members have discussed, is um, how we can bring something back in that, some type of program back similar to the red up but it's going to be difficult to replace this that crew because they were amazing and they did a lot of work and i think really a lot of the reasons why we're seeing so much weeds and debris now is because we've had so much rain um but you still have to get out there and cut the weeds whether if you can't use the electrical equipment or, w or whatever kind of equipment use hand equipment we need to get it done okay thank you councilwoman councilwoman harris yeah, I have to say the same thing. I think that's one of the biggest issues is when they got rid of um, the Red Up crew, uh, which was a political move, and um, we wouldn't have these problems right now. They started when Bob O'Connor was the mayor and continued until... Um, uh, we had this mayor now. Same with PWSA was the same exact problem. Um, we had great people that worked for PWSA. We had a, a great chemist, and um, they were all taken out of the offices, people with 25 and 35 years knowledge and a chemist that was uh, world renowned actually and they bring in a head guy that consulted with us and he brought his friends in and they decided to put that chemical in which ate on the lead pipes all these problems, all these millions of dollars that are going out there digging up streets are because of political reasons. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable. And to this day, we can't drink the water. It's sad. Now, they did bring Stanley back in and a couple of the other ones to help. But when the damage is done, it's done sad okay thank you very much with nothing further from members may I have a motion to approve uh, our minutes excuse your absent member and adjourn our meeting so moved. we have a second all in favor aye, aye.